Mm-hmm. Guests on Keel heard via the Jack Spring Electric Keel Newsmaker Hotline. One of those is Mr. Tom Arson, a local attorney and former Shreveport City Council member. Hey, Mr. Tom, welcome back to Keel. How you doing today? Uh, it's good to be with y'all. Our pleasure, as always, sir. An op-ed you had in the Times a couple of days ago, and the title is Questioning Conventional Wisdom. Let's start in the very broad sense. What wisdom, what conventional wisdom are you questioning, and is it your own? Well, some of it is my own, <laughs> uh, for sure. Uh, you know, when when I was on the council, we were following... Uh, we were following some uh, thoughts about uh, development and protection of uh, the city's property tax base that uh, that I'm not sure was uh, ultimately and, and long term accurate. And uh, one of the things that I, I hope comes with wisdom is the ability to continue to look at things, continue to study and continue to develop. Uh, what you think is appropriate public policy. So what is that today? What have you changed? What do you see? What does the evolving Tom Arsenault see? Uh, Well, uh, what I do see is that we have followed policies that uh, have exacerbated the the donut hole in the middle of the city. And uh, when we don't have growing population and we create new neighborhoods further and further out, those people, the people that populate those neighborhoods are primarily people who are moving from other neighborhoods, which leaves behind blight. You know, we had Shreveport's economic development director, Brandon Fail, in here a couple of, well, in the uh, in the last hour. And that's basically what he was saying. Um, to give you another example, John Perkins and I don't agree on much, but one of the things we do agree on is basically what you are saying is that cities seem to expand and as a result, make it more and more difficult to pay for their infrastructures, etc. And as you said, leaving that donut hole and we're not the only city to do that, right? Oh gosh, no, <laughs> uh, that, that, that's been the conventional that's been kind of the conventional wisdom since the 1950s, um, and it, it uh, you know, and, and I, I think at the time it created a lot of uh, of development and a lot of uh, a lot of new things and a lot of good things. I mean, it did. It's not 100 percent negative, but I think we ignore uh, we ignore some of the the uh, collateral effects. Well, pardon me, Mister. Okay, we, we just and now some of those collateral effects are coming home to roost. We I mean, leave I'm, a lot I've of been, we leave a lot of empty stuff in our wake. Bluntly speaking, right? Correct. We do. We do. I mean, if you, you if you build a new school far out, then oh, we have too many schools. We have to close one. Well, let's close one in the middle of the city, and therefore there's no incentive for people in the middle of the city to live there because they can't live near, near their school. And we've made it easier for them to get far out because we've built all these highways that we now have to maintain. And as a result, they, they move further out. And where do they do? They sell their they sell their homes in Highland or Queensboro or um, Broadmoor in those places. And then they create less of a market there. And we're further spread out. And, and I, I'm just not sure that that's. I'm not sure that that's the right way to go, and I, I do know that that was the annexation policy that I that I favored when I was on the council, and I've now decided that perhaps I was wrong. But 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 the horse is already out of the barn. You've already did it. You've already done it. How do you correct it? Well, uh, it's very difficult to correct, Aaron. Um, but I think the first place to start, you know, um, what I, you use what I call the first rule of hold. When you find yourself in a hole, stop digging. And so the first thing you do is say, okay, we now see what the implications of this are. Let's stop doing that. Have we stopped? Then Have we look, stopped? Then you can look for ways to rebuild, uh, to, rebuild, uh, to rebuild neighborhoods. And I think that mostly has to happen with private investment that is encouraged. Uh, I, I don't think it happens in uh, by large public investment, and, and for this reason, you can't. I, I believe anyway, and I and I live in the heart of Highland. <clears throat> I believe that you cannot sustain a neighborhood on help to the 
poor. I'm not suggesting you shouldn't have the help to the poor. I'm suggesting that other things are necessary to rebuild a neighborhood, to bring up property values where people are willing to make investments to maintain existing properties. Um, and, and hopefully you do that without great displacement of people who are already there. But if your primary resident is on uh, some kind of government assistance, it's going to be very hard to sustain the neighborhood as a whole. Councilwoman Lavette Fuller texted me this morning and said she is sponsoring legislation to halt all annexations next month. Is that a start? It's a it's a start of a very good debate. I mean, I think there are times, for example, uh, you, you might have uh, you might have areas that are surrounded by the city or very close to the city that you could you could have reason to annex property, but but having a policy of annexing everything uh, probably is no longer a good idea. But the purpose of that annexation historically is to expand the tax base. Mm -hmm. It, and, and we're not exactly we're not exactly rolling in in dough, Mr. Tom. Isn't isn't that the primary reason for making your city bigger geographically? Well, that's always been that that has always been the uh, that's always been the argument, and uh, and it's not a frivolous argument. Uh, but if you uh, if you listen to people who are studying these things long term. Uh, it's worthy of question. I mean, I've, I've uh, now attended two different talks by Chuck Marone, Marone uh, and I've read his book, Strong Towns, uh, and he makes some really very, very good points uh, that those are shiny new things that do bring an immediate rush, but long term they cost us more than they, than they bring in. And uh, I'm not ready to say that's right. I'm just saying it makes a lot of sense and we ought to pay attention to it.